In geometry, you can use line and angle relationships to find missing measures or to draw conclusions about a figure. Here are three relationships that you will find between lines. First, perpendicular lines. These are lines that intersect forming four 90 degree angles. You can see in this figure that, ang I'm sorry, line L and line M are perpendicular because this corner here is a right angle. Now, since this one is a right angle, so is the angle adjacent to it over here because 90 plus 90 is 180, making that straight angle. You can continue that thought to prove that the bottom left is a right angle and also the bottom right is a right angle. You can note this by taking the name of the line L and drawing an upside down T. That's the symbol for perpendicular to line M. Parallel lines are lines with the same slope that never intersect. In the past, when you've studied parallel lines, you may not have used that word slope, but from unit three, we've learned about the steepness of a line and how that is named the slope, and that is the characteristic of parallel lines. You will continue that idea in um, other geometry classes and in algebra one by noting the slope in an equation and seeing that those equations form parallel lines. So line R is parallel to line S. It can be drawn with two lines kind of at a diagonal, or they could be straight up and down. Either way, that communicates that line R is parallel to line S. And skew lines. These are lines that never intersect, but they're not parallel. And that's because in 3D figures, they're on separate planes. So if you look at this rectangular prism here, I've tried to highlight it in green. Line X and line Y will be kind of like how my arms are right now. They're on different planes. and if they were to continue on, they're not going to intersect, but they are not parallel. Let's practice identifying these. First, let's look at line AB and line AC. So AB is running here. AC is running across the top here. Their relationship is they are perpendicular. I could also write that relationship by saying that line AB is perpendicular to line AC. For practice B here, CE and BD. CE is running across the top and BD is running down here. They are never going to intersect, however they are not parallel, so they are skew. They don't really have a relationship, so we're not going to have a way to write them as we did on part A. On part C, AC and BD, AC is running across the top, BD is running across the bottom. They are on the same plane and they are parallel. So I could write that as AC is parallel to B, D. Here's two of the relationships that you're going to see. Adjacent angles and vertical. Adjacent angles have a common vertex and a common side. They're side-by-side -side angles. You may have heard this word adjacent just as a general English vocabulary word and not just in your math class. So angles two and three, they have the common vertex right here and they have the common side. Now with this lesson especially, you're seeing that there's lots of drawings on here. Stop the video and copy those drawings onto your notes. They're not gonna make as much sense with just the words. You need the picture to go along with it. So if you need to go back in the video and make the drawings that we did for parallel, perpendicular, and skew lines, these and any other drawings that you're gonna see on the video. Vertical angles are opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines, making them congruent. So angle one is across from, it is opposite, angle three, and they are congruent. Angle two and angle four are also congruent. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines in the same plane. 
transversals to parallel lines form special angle pairs and that's what we're going to look at when a transversal cuts through parallel lines so you can see my parallel lines the transversal is the diagonal going through there and i've tried to color code the congruent pairs there's three things you need to know about parallel lines cut by a transversal first their corresponding angles are congruent so if you look at each kind of subfamily in this Angle 1 corresponds to angle 5 because it's to the left of the transversal and it's above the parallel line. Whereas angle 4 is corresponding to angle 8 and it is congruent. Another thing that we know is that alternate interior angles are congruent. Those would be pairs like angle 4 and angle 5. They are alternate sides of the transversal but they are inside the parallel line. So they're alternate interior angles. And then alternate exterior angles likewise are congruent. This would be ones like angle 2 and angle 7. They are on alternate sides of the transversal and they are outside. They are on the exterior of the parallel lines. So I can put all this together. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, which is congruent to angle 5, which is congruent to angle 8. And then the other set of congruent angles is angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 which is congruent to angle 6 which is congruent to angle 7. So let's practice. You'll need to draw each of these so you're going to need some extra time to to copy those down. Pause the video, try to attempt to answer these and then compare with what I've done. On practice A, we're wanting to see the relationship between JL and KM. JL is running on the left and KM is running on the right. They are parallel to each other. LM across the base of the figure and KN coming on like the back corner, they are skew. They never intersect and they're not parallel. LM and KM, LM running across the bottom, KM running down from that. Air, um, those are perpendicular. Then on the second half, line R is parallel to line S. Find the measure of each angle. These are like puzzles that you're trying to figure out and you're using what you know about parallel lines cut by a transversal and what you know about supplementary angles. You are given that down here is 30 degrees. So angle 1, if I look up at angle 1, that is a corresponding angle. And we know that corresponding angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal are congruent. So those are 30 degrees. Now for angle 4, directly underneath it, I know that it is 150 degrees because angle 1 and angle 4 are adjacent to each other. They form supplementary angles, making a straight line. So I have to ask myself, what do I add to 30 to get 180 degrees? And it's 150 degrees. Then it asks about angle 6. Angle 6 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles, and we know those are congruent, so it is also 150 degrees.